Hey everyone, welcome back. We're having so much fun in Kivil this month talking about building a bridge between yourself and other people. And it's about peace. And when we have peace, we prove that we care more about the person, about the relationship, about each other, more than we care about winning an argument. Okay? So when you make peace, it's kind of like you're building a bridge across from you to the other person. You can reconnect with them, you can show them that you care, and even if you don't always agree, right? We know that in our relationships, we're not always gonna see eye to eye, so we're gonna have problems, and sometimes we need to bridge that gap. It can be really tough to live at peace with other people, can't it? We know that if you live with anyone, you probably know it's tough to keep peace, but when we remember how God made peace with us, and he did that through sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and to bridge that gap between God and us to make our relationship perfect again. When we know that he did that for us, then it helps us to bridge that gap between other people as well and be a peacemaker. We wanna treat others the way we would wanna be treated and the way Jesus has treated us. So I am practicing bridging the gap by a little game called uh, floor limbo. So you know when you go down to the creek and you want to get to the other side, I have a creek behind my house, what do you have to do? You have to like jump across, right? If you don't have a bridge. So instead of like a limbo underneath, this is going to be like jumping. So I've got, I've got my creek here and um, I'm going to see if I can jump across the, the first part here. So, okay, that, that was pretty easy. Um, but the, it kind of widens, like usually a little further down the creek, maybe it's getting closer to like the river or something, gets wider, this creek gets wider, so I'm gonna try the second time here, a little bit more, okay, no problem. But it's gonna get tough to bridge this gap, this, the gap across this river is getting bigger and bigger, I don't know if I can do it. How far do you think you can jump? Did you find a creek this week? We went to a creek this week and we found some cool bridges. I posted a picture on Facebook. I want you guys to show any bridges that you find this week and see if you can either jump across them or build a bridge. I think we should move on to another game. We're gonna play a game because in our Bible story today, we're gonna, it's gonna be something about water. I really needed some after that. That jumping. But I'm gonna play water bottle shuffle. All right, so I've got three buckets and I'm gonna put the water bottle under one of the buckets and you are gonna keep your eye on it and see if you can figure out which one the water bottle is under. All right, so currently, I think you know which one it's under. Are we ready? Okay, I'm gonna shuffle. Okay, what are you thinking? Which bucket is the water bottle under? Do you think it's number one? Nope, not under there. Number two? Nothing, so if you guessed this one, you are correct, it is stuck in the handle. There it is, all right? Now you know how it works, let's try it one more time, all right? It's going back under this one. Keep your eye, I'm gonna shuffle. What do you think? Is it number one? Guys, I didn't realize that my bucket has a hole. It is under number one. All right, so today we are hearing a Bible story about water, about some wells. So this might have seemed like an easy game to us or even jumping across a creek, but in Bible times, water was super important. It was kind of like the lifeline of these people, they really needed to have water, they couldn't just turn on their tap. So this is an important thing, and we're gonna hear a Bible story about someone who has to deal with making peace even when people weren't nice to them. So let's check this out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. 
the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 26. God had chosen Abraham to follow him, and God made the same promises to Abraham's son, Isaac. I will make your children after you, as many as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. All nations on earth will be blessed because of your children. Thank you, God. The land of the Philistines where Isaac lived had experienced a period of famine, but God blessed Isaac's crops. Hey, boss, we done gathered 100 times more wheat than we planted. Excellent. 103.7 times as much, to be precise. And your flocks and herds are multiplying like rabbits. Actually, they're increasing like sheep and goats, because that's what they are. Very well, carry on. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby grew jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells, cutting off his water source. Excuse me? The king of the Philistines called for Isaac and issued a command. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. It wasn't fair. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight, but he chose to keep his coup. All right, we'll move down to the Valley of Gerar. Isaac and his family packed up everything he owned. I knew I should have been saving all those Camel X delivery boxes. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived many years before. Oh, all right, men. Let's open up those old wells my father dug. <sighs> Isaac's servants immediately got to work digging for water. Wee! It's hotter than a snake in a hog's back out here. My calculations of soil composition. We should hit water in precisely 2.6 seconds. Well, ain't that the bee's knees? Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. <laughs> uh, that is, until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up. So kind of you to open up these wells for us. Step beside the water's ours. Isaac's servants gaped at the Philistines. You got some knife. These wells belong to Isaac by ancestral tradition and dint of hard labor. Whatever. We're taking the well. Oh, yeah? We're going to have to fight me for it. I believe the appropriate course of action is to flee. As Isaac's servants and the Philistine herdsmen faced off, Isaac himself arrived. Easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. But, uh, but we can take them. Let's go. So Isaac and his family and his servants and his flocks all moved camp down the valley. And once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. This is an exercise in futility. Yeah, well, I've been working out. My futility is really strong. Oh, <laughs> look here! The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water, but it wasn't long before Philistine herdsmen arrived on the scene. Yes, another day, another well for us. Why, you, you, I'll flatten you back to the flood. Step aside. Eek, save me. Once again, Isaac showed up. Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. Oh, come on. We could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. For a third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and once again, his servants dug new wells. This time, I'm going to tie those bullies in knots and dip them in garlic. Oh, look. Water. Yay. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hmm. This time, no one challenged Isaac or his servants. They were left to tend to their flocks and herds in peace. That is until one day, Isaac spotted King Abimelech heading his way with a host of advisors. When the royal entourage arrived, Isaac welcomed them. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. Abimelech shifted and exchanged a glance with his advisors. Well, we saw clearly the Lord was with you. So we want to make a 
peace treaty with you. We always treated you well. We sent you away peacefully, and uh, now the Lord has blessed you. <laughs> Give us your word you won't harm us. I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. Early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then the Philistines went on their way. Need a drink? Pretty good well right there by the road. Yep, even though Isaac had the power to win a fight, he had chosen to stay strong and walk away three times in a row. And God had blessed him with peace. So Isaac chose to walk away from a fight three times in a row, didn't he? That was amazing to hear. Let's summarize the story. Let's do a little activity. What you're gonna do is find a piece of paper. It can be computer paper, or scrap paper, or construction paper, okay? So find yourself a paper, pause if you need to go and get it. And now that you have your paper, we're gonna fold it like an accordion, okay? So you're gonna fold over a little strip here. You've probably done this before. Then flip it over and fold the same amount on the other side. So you're just gonna alternate sides, right? And fold it the same amount. You can kind of like match up the edges, all right? And when you're all done, you're gonna get this accordion style paper. And if you pinch it in the middle, it's gonna look like a bow, right? I taped mine so it's really easy. Just so you know, my first one, I did it the long way and looks like this. So you can decide which one you think looks better. I'm gonna use this one. And this is gonna be our prop to retell the story. We can actually use this for every single role in what is called the shortest script in history. And we're gonna retell the story with Isaac and the Wells, all right? So uh, pause if you need to fold your paper and make your bow. And we're gonna get started with the script. All right, I will tell you how to put your bow and we're gonna just, it's gonna be every single roll. So we have Mr. Philistine, you must leave the wells. So this is Mr. Philistine, it is a mustache. You must leave the wells, the servant says, but I won't leave the wells. He's got a hair bow. All right, so it says, I won't leave the wells. Mr. Philistine, back to him, but you must leave the wells. Servant, but I won't leave the wells. Mr. Philistine, but you must leave the wells. But I, I won't leave the wells. Isaac now steps in. He says, I'll leave the wells. And he's got a bow tie. And that's the whole thing. That was the whole story. We got this argument back and forth. Isaac is the one who comes in, he keeps the peace. He says, even though these are my wells and they're my family's, we've had them forever, I'm just gonna walk away. I'm gonna get out of here and keep the peace. Isaac could have gone to war with his neighbors over this because it was his right. But later on in the story, we find out that that king, he, the king of the Philistines comes back to make peace with Isaac and the Israelites. Do you think he would have done that if Isaac had fought with them and kind of stood up for what he, he deserved? Probably not, right? And so Isaac's refusal to fight eventually led to peace for Israel and for his family to be able to thrive on that land. So it's a pretty cool story. Isaac showed us that you can, uh, you can care about others by walking away from a fight. So if we wanna show that we care about other people, right? Sometimes it actually takes walking away from a fight. So why don't you say this bottom line with me because you're probably gonna come up to some fights this week, maybe with your siblings or your parents, uh, people at school, well, you're not at school, or maybe you're back at school this week, wherever you are, you might encounter some fights. So this is our bottom line for today. Say it with me. You can show you care about others by walking away from a fight. It takes a lot of courage, it takes following Jesus' example, right? Jesus didn't do anything when people kind of attacked and mistreated him. If we think about Jesus and the peace that he made between God and us, right? He allowed himself to be arrested. He allowed himself to be put on the cross and to be made fun of and to be uh, beat up. And he could have stopped it, right? We know that Jesus was God, so he was powerful enough to stop it. 
and he didn't. He did that to make peace once and for all with us, and that's our example. So we're gonna remember this one thing from the story. We can walk away from a fight. We can show we care about others by walking away from the, the fight. By the way, remember those types of bridges I showed you last week? I found out that the picture that we have here on our bottom line slide today is the, uh, how do I say it? The uh, cantilever bridge. All right, so now you know. Well, I know all of us like to win, right? When it comes to an argument or a fight or what we want, we like to win. That, that's normal, right? We like to get our way. But when we put that aside in order to make peace, then we're really following Jesus' example, right? And we, we wanna care about people more than just about winning that argument. So maybe you felt like Isaac, right? Maybe you've had someone who's uh, taking your stuff or you have a neighbor that only comes over because they wanna shoot hoops or they wanna use your trampoline or something. Um, we have people that kind of, we know that they don't care about us very much, but we can be the person to keep that peace and to uh, care about them and we want peace in the long run, right? That'll make the most difference in our relationships. Now, I wanna tell you that of course there are cases when it is important to stand up for what is right and we don't want to be taken advantage of or, or if you're not sure what to do in a situation about how to keep the, the peace, then you wanna to talk to someone about that, right? Because we want um, everyone to have peace and to be protected. So make sure that you talk to someone if you're not sure about what to do in a situation, right? Well, we know that we can make wise choices, we can treat others the way we wanna be treated, and we really need God's help for that. So let's pray together and let's ask God to help us keep the peace. God, thank you again for what you did in sending your son Jesus to make peace between us and you. Thank you that you love us that much. And God, I pray that you would teach us to walk away from fights when the relationship is more important. I pray that we would choose peace, that we would give up uh, our way in order to uh, have a good relationship with those around us and help us to make wise choices and, and talk about that with our family so that we can do the right thing. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so we had the shortest script in history. We are going to work on making peace. Let's talk about our memory verse for a second. This is a reminder from, uh, from God that we need to work hard. It's, it's hard work, right? We said it is difficult. So this is what our memory verse says. Let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Right? Doesn't that feel good when we build each other up? That's Romans 14, 19. So we're gonna do that work to live in peace with each other. Keep looking out for bridges. Let me know what you find. Let's take some time to worship God and to thank him for what he's done for us. And then we have a cool music video about peace to end our time together. We'll see you soon. You're my courage, I don't have to be afraid You're my fortress, no matter what comes my way You're my treasure, forever Yes, we'll be together, always Even when the days get harder, I know you'll rescue me Even when the sky is darker, I know you'll bring me peace you are my strength, you are my savior
Just fine, we'll sort it all out. It just takes. 